All right, everyone, get ready for a wild ride today. We're diving into two totally different parts of the financial world. They're packed with potential and maybe even some risk too. Sounds exciting. You bet it is. Now, you, our amazing listeners, wanted all the details on Shiba Inu. Ah, uh, yes, the cryptocurrency trying to break free from that meme coin label. Exactly. And then we've got SoFi, the fintech company, uh, everyone thought was was going straight to the top. Until it wasn't. Yeah. What happened there? You know, it's that contrast that makes this so interesting, really. Shiba Inu has this uh, fascinating golden cross formation happening right now. Ooh, mysterious. It is. And it's got serious investors paying close attention. But then you have SoFi posting these seriously impressive earnings. Yeah. But their stock took a big hit. It did. It did. So what gives? What's going on? Exactly. Well, let's break it all down. First up. Shiba Inu. This cryptocurrency has been on a wild ride, especially with all that recent crypto chaos. Definitely. Remember all the news about Tether? Oh yeah. That sent shockwaves through the whole market. Lots of digital assets uh, took a hit. Shiba Inu included. It did. It was a real shakeup. But you know what stood out to me? What's that? Despite that initial dip, Shiba Inu uh, actually bounced back. Oh, interesting. At least partially. And that's pretty impressive if you ask me, considering how how rough it was for the whole market yeah. it really tells me there's some some real resilience there like investors haven't given up on it completely okay i'm seeing that resilience but what about this golden cross thing right it, it sounds kind of mystical like a message from the crypto gods <laughs> yeah maybe not quite that dramatic but in technical analysis a golden cross it it happens when a short-term moving average let's say the 50-day climbs above a long-term moving average like the 200-day okay Traders watch these moving averages super closely because this golden cross, it's often seen as like a really, really bullish signal. So bullish. Yeah, it suggests that uh, prices are likely going up, you know, upward momentum is building. And boom, Shiba Inu has this golden cross right now. It does. Should we be celebrating? Yep. Especially after its strong October. Whoa, 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 let's not get too excited just yet. The golden cross is good, definitely a good sign. But historically, November hasn't been Shiba Inu's best month. Really? Yeah. But here's the thing. This time around, there are some other factors at play that could really change things. Oh, like what? I'm talking about Shibarian. Shibarian. Shiba Inu's own blockchain network, right? I've been seeing so much buzz about it. The numbers look, well, they look amazing. They really are. Shibarian is like the key to understanding where Shiba Inu might be going. We're not talking about small growth here. Active accounts on Shibarium, they've they've gone up by over 600% just this month. Wow. And transaction volume, up a massive 1,200%. That's huge. That's insane. It really is. And what this tells me is that uh, there's a growing confidence in the whole Shibarium network. More people are using it. And that could have a huge positive impact on the price of SIB itself. Okay, so I'm starting to get why everyone's so excited about Shibarium. Yeah. But we can't ignore this wild prediction, right? Which one? That Eshaib could jump up by by a mind-blowing 351%. Oh, yeah, that. Okay, let's let's talk about that. It's important to remember that this is just one analyst's view. There are so many factors that could influence whether or not it actually happens. Yeah. Lots of moving parts. Fair enough. Yeah. But what's the logic behind such a huge potential increase? So this analyst, Javon Marks, he believes Shiba Inu is on the verge of a major transformation driven by two main things. Okay. First continued expansion of its ecosystem with Shibarium at the center of it all. Right, makes sense. And the second, uh, the upcoming launch of Shiba Inu's own decentralized autonomous organization. You mean a DAO? Yes, a DAO. Okay, let's break that down. For those of us who aren't uh, fluent in crypto, what exactly is a DAO and why is it a big deal for Shiba Inu? Good question. Think of a DAO as a kind of um, digital co-op. Ishib holders have a direct say in in how the whole project is run. So they can vote on proposals, you know, influence decisions, really shape the future of Shiba Inu. It's a way to, to give the community real ownership. Interesting. So how does this DAO tie into that price prediction? Well, this DAO launch, it could dramatically increase Shiba Inu's utility, attract new users and investors, and basically make it a much bigger player in the crypto world. So it's like giving power to the people, making Shiba Inu more useful, and taking it to a whole new level. I get it. But reaching that 351% target, uh, I bet it's not going to be easy, right? You're right about that. Even with all these positive developments, 
Uh, keeping that momentum going is key. Momentum is key. Shiba Inu needs to keep attracting investors, expanding its ecosystem, and really delivering on its promises. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Okay, marathon noted. But now let's shift gears a bit and look at SoFi. Yeah. They just totally blew past their earnings and revenue expectations, but their stock took a hit. A big one. More than a 12% drop. <laughs> it's like scoring a touchdown and then immediately fumbling in the ball. What happened? Well, this is where we get into the... Uh, you know, the psychology of the market. Okay. It might seem strange, but sometimes just doing better than expected, it, it isn't enough. Really? Yeah, especially if investors were uh, expecting even more. So it's not just the numbers themselves, but how those numbers compare to what everyone was, was hoping for. Exactly. Let's be clear. So Phi's performance was really strong, objectively. Go. They got a ton of new members. They had revenue growth across the board. They improved their credit quality, and their net interest income is going up steadily. All good signs. Sounds like a recipe for success to me. Okay. <laughs> but clearly, there's more to the story here. There is. It boils down to two main things. First, SoFi's price-to-earnings ratio, also called the P.E. ratio, is still quite high. Okay. This basically means investors are uh, they're paying a premium for every dollar of SoFi's earnings. And that can make some people nervous, especially if they start thinking the stock is overvalued. So even with great performance, some investors might be wondering, hold on, can they keep this up? Is the price too high? Exactly. And the second thing is the whole game of investor expectations. SoFi is what's called a, a, a growth stock, meaning it has the potential for huge returns, but it tends to be more volatile. And in this case, even exceeding those expectations wasn't enough to get rid of those worries about its high valuation. So even good news can actually trigger a sell-off if it doesn't meet those super high expectations built into the stock price. That's how the market works sometimes, and this situation shows just how sensitive investor sentiment can be, especially when it comes to those high-growth companies. Now, I'm sure everyone's wondering... To buy SoFi or not to buy SoFi? That's the question. It is. And of course, we can't give financial advice here, but we can give you a balanced view based on what we know. Perfect. Tell us more. So, on the one hand, SoFi's high P.E. ratio, while it's a warning sign for some, could also mean huge potential returns if they keep growing at this rate. So high risk, but potentially high reward. Exactly. <laughs> Classic growth stock. But on the other hand, that same high key e makes SoFi very vulnerable to sudden market changes and, uh, you know, swings in how investors are feeling, as we just saw. Right. SoFi's future really depends on whether they can keep exceeding expectations, growing their user base, and uh, solidifying their place in the fintech world. Sounds like a nail biter. It is. This is a good reminder that investing always comes with some risk, and doing your homework is crucial before you make any decisions. Absolutely. Don't just follow the hype blindly. Right, right. Consider how much risk you're comfortable with, your investment goals, and uh, talk to a financial advisor you trust. Well said. We've covered a lot today, from, from meme coins and golden crosses to the crazy world of fintech stocks and the ups and downs of market psychology. So I'm curious, what does all of this mean for you, our listeners? What stood out to you from our deep dive so far? Yeah, what has you thinking? What other research are you going to do? What questions are on your mind? We've given you the tools. Now it's time to use them. Don't forget, the world of finance never stops moving. What looks like a sure thing today could be tomorrow's... Uh, big mistake. Exactly. That's why it's so important to stay informed, really think about the information you come across, and never stop learning. Speaking of learning, we talked about Shibarium and its incredible growth. Yeah. But what if the launch of Shiba Inu's DOO is even more impactful in the long run? Hmm. That's a good question. Could this be what finally pushes Shiba Inu past that mean coin label for good? It's definitely a possibility. Something to think about. It is. As always, only time will tell. Time and careful observation. All right. On that note, we're going to wrap up part one of our deep dive into Shiba Inu and SoFi. See you back here for part two. Stay tuned because we'll be uncovering even more insights and looking at some of the risks that come with these fascinating financial stories. Welcome back, everyone. Ready for round two of our deep dive? I am. We've got a lot more to cover, and I think you'll find it even more interesting than the first part. Definitely. We're going even deeper now, looking past all the hype and excitement to uncover those potential risks and challenges for both Shiba Inu and SoFi. Right, because no investment is perfect. Exactly. It's really important to understand those risks before you, you know, make any decisions. Absolutely. So let's start with Shiba Inu. Despite all the, the positive signs we talked about, Shibarium's growth, 
the Golden Cross, the upcoming DAO launch, there are still some vulnerabilities to keep in mind. Okay, lay it on us. What are those potential pitfalls for Shiba Inu? Well, the crypto market is known for being volatile. Oh, yeah. Prices go up and down like crazy, and Shiba Inu is no exception. Remember, it started as a meme coin. Right. And even though it's it's working hard to change that image, its past could still be a factor for some investors. So even with all the progress, that reputation could hold it back. It could. And then you have the issue of competition. Oh, right. There are tons of new crypto projects popping up all the time. Shiba Inu has to constantly innovate and be different to stay relevant. It's a tough world out there. It is. And and let's not forget about regulations. Oh, yeah. Governments all over the world are still figuring out how to, to regulate cryptocurrencies. And any new rules could really impact Shiba Inu's future. So that uncertainty adds another layer of risk. It seems like investing in Shiba Inu or any cryptocurrency is not for the, the risk averse. You got it. It requires a lot of thought understanding the risks, and a solid investment strategy. Makes sense. So we've talked about the potential ups and downs of Shiba Inu. Now let's switch to SoFi. What are the key things that could, you know, make or break them? Okay, so Fi's success depends on a few crucial things. First, they need to keep growing their user base. Right. More users equals more revenue. Exactly. And they need to do that while while dealing with a lot of competition. Oh, of course. Traditional banks are starting to offer similar services, so SoFi has to stand out, offer something unique. They can't just blend in? Nope. Another key thing is their, their ability to manage risk. SoFi is a lending platform, and that always comes with some risk. They've got to lend responsibly and do everything they can to you know, avoid potential losses. So responsible lending is crucial for them to be successful long-term. Definitely. And finally, they need to keep an eye on regulations. FinTech is, uh, it's heavily regulated and any changes in those rules could affect their operations and profits. So many things to keep track of. It sounds like they're juggling a lot. Growth, competition, risk management, and staying ahead of all the rules. They are. But SoFi has shown they can be resilient and adapt. The question is, can they keep that up over time? Good question. You know what? I feel a lot more prepared to ask the right questions now. That's what we want with these deep dives. Exactly. They give you the knowledge and confidence to make good decisions, whether you're thinking about investing in Shiba Inu, SoFi, or something else entirely. You've definitely given us a lot to think about. What are some of the bigger takeaways from today's deep dive? What's the, the main message you want our listener to walk away with? I think the key takeaway is that uh, no matter what you're investing in, it's super important to approach it with, you know, a healthy dose of skepticism and a commitment to always learning. Love that. Don't just believe the hype or take everything at face value. Right. Do your research, understand the risks and be ready for anything. Exactly. And remember, the financial world is always changing. What seems like a sure bet today could be a disaster tomorrow. S stay informed, be flexible and and always be willing to adjust your approach. So it's all about being proactive, informed, and adaptable. Great advice. Thank you. But before we move on, I have one last thought. Oh. We talked about how Shiba Inu is trying to move past being a meme coin, but what if? Yeah. What if that meme coin status is actually an advantage in the long run? Whoa. That's an interesting way to look at it. I hadn't thought about that. Think about it. Shiba Inu is already a well-known name. Lots of people have heard of it. That's true. They have a lot of brand awareness already. Exactly. And if they can use that existing fan base while also building a, a strong ecosystem and, and offering real-world utility, yeah. they could become a major player in the crypto world. It's like uh, turning a weakness into a strength. That's fascinating. It's all about perspective. What seems like a negative to some people could be the key to their success. That's a great point. It reminds us to, to challenge our assumptions and consider different points of view. So is Shiba Inu just another meme coin or will it be something much bigger? Only time will tell, but it's a question we're thinking about. That's what I love about the financial world. It's full of surprises. It is. It's full of opportunities and possibilities. As long as you have the knowledge and the right mindset. Well said. Now, are you ready to wrap up this deep dive? All right. Time to bring it all home. We've seen the potential. We've uncovered the risks. And now let's uh, put it all together for our listeners. What are the key takeaways here? You know, I think this deep dive really shows how important it is to, to make smart decisions, especially when it comes to finance. Things are changing all the time. Totally. Whether you're thinking about Shiba Inu, SoFi, or, or any other investment, you got to know what you're doing. Knowledge is power. It is? 
We've covered a lot, golden crosses, shibarium's growth, P-E ratios, all that stuff. Right. But it's not about memorizing everything. Nope. It's more about understanding the big picture and, right. and how to analyze these opportunities. Like when we talk about Shiba Inu and how it's trying to move past that meme coin label. Right. We looked at Shibarium's crazy growth, all the excitement about the DAO launch, and and even how that meme status could actually be a good thing. It's all part of the equation. Exactly. And with SoFi, we saw how they could beat those earnings expectations and still see their stock drop. Yeah, that was a head scratcher. It was. We talked about how market valuation, investor sentiment, and the uh, the fact that growth stocks can be volatile, how all of that can lead to those uh, those unexpected movements in the market. It's a wild ride. And then there's risk assessment. Oh, yeah, that's key. We talk about the potential challenges for both Shiba Inu and SoFi. Right. No investment is perfect. There are always downsides. Exactly. It's about balancing the, the potential rewards with how much risk you're willing to take. Absolutely. And, and I think one of the biggest takeaways from all of this is that you have to keep learning. Always be learning. The financial world is always changing, and what's true today might not be true tomorrow. Stay curious, stay engaged, and never stop asking questions. So, so as we wrap things up here, what's your final piece of advice for our listeners? Do your own research. Think for yourself and remember that knowledge is power. I love it. Don't be afraid to ask questions, challenge what you hear, and look for different opinions. And most importantly, keep learning. Beautifully said. Well, folks, that concludes our deep dive into Shiba Inu and SoFi. It's been fun. It has. And to all our listeners out there, thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for more deep dives on all sorts of interesting topics. See you next time. Until then, stay curious. Oh,